And joining us now from our Washington bureau with a closer look at what the president wants to do and reaction from Congress and the intelligence community is CBS News national security analyst Juan Zarate. Juan, good morning. Good morning, Anthony. Obviously, there's a delicate balance here, Juan, between uh, you know protecting national security and protecting privacy. How well do you think the president's proposals actually address that? I think reflecting on his speech, both the rhetoric and the substance, and then the policy directive that he issued yesterday, I think he struck it fairly well. He clearly had to respond to the criticism and the growing distrust in the government's collection of metadata, in particular the telephone metadata. But he also clearly wanted to preserve the ability of the government to access this data and analyze it. And I think you've seen, given the criticism on both sides, that he has struck a balance here. The question is whether or not, uh, how far these reforms go downstream and, and ultimately what this looks like. You mentioned a balance. I'm just curious, how is the intelligence community responding to all these recommendations? Vanita, officially the director of national intelligence is supportive. He came out with a statement yesterday uh, supporting the president's approach. He's now been directed to look at the alternatives to uh, the housing of this telephone metadata somewhere other than the NSA. Um, but I think there's a sort of a mixed reaction among the intelligence community troops. There's a sigh of relief because the program in essence and the programs in general that the U.S. government uses to collect uh, mass amounts of data are still in place. At the same time, there's concern that downstream the restrictions may start to, to pose uh, unilateral disarmament on the part of the U.S. intelligence community. Juan, what do you think the potential downsides to these reforms are, if any? Well, you heard uh, Nancy talk a little bit about this in terms of the judicial review process that's now in place for an analyst to actually be able to access the telephone metadata. I think there's a concern here that we start to build in so many layers uh, that we start to slow the process of accessing data or blind our, aggress uh, blind our views of uh, potential threats that are, that are coming. I think the real concern here is are we creating a, an atmosphere where uh, the intelligence community is less aggressive, not willing to use technology to understand the threats facing the United States. If there are now more reviews needed to search data that the government needs to take a look at, couldn't that really slow things down if there ever was a terrorist attack? Absolutely, but if you look at the president's directive and the language of the speech, he really uh, accounts for this. Certainly he's allowing the attorney general and the FISA court, the court that oversees this program, the ability to fashion what this will look like. And I think they'll want a very quick process to allow the analysts to get at this information. Uh, but in other cases, <clears throat> he has not asked for judicial review. For example, the national security letters that the FBI uses aggressively to get information is not going to be subject to judicial process at this point. So that's good news for the intelligence community. Juan Zarate in Washington. Thank you, Juan.